This is Mr. G doing another um, flip classroom lecture. This one is lecture number three in the series for chapter 23, and it's changing clothing and hospital gowns. So you as a nursing assistant and nursing assistant student will be assisting residents and patients with changing garments. Um, so it's a very important skill to learn to do. Um, there are certain rules that you need to follow, and the first one is to provide for privacy. I think you've seen throughout the teaching of patient care that there is a big importance on providing privacy for patients. Um, patients, you, you don't want to expose them as much as you have to. Um, many times um, patients will change into clean sleepwear and gowns after bathing um, in the nursing home um, environment, they will be dressing in their regular clothes. Um, so you need to um, be able to provide privacy in whatever, um, whatever that you're getting them dressed in. Uh, you want to encourage the patient to do as much as possible. I think that has been a recurring theme throughout is that um, the patient may have some deficits, but you want to maximize their abilities as much as possible. And sometimes that will take a lot more time than normally, um, but that is uh, very important to be able to maintain so that the patient's self-esteem um, is maintained. <clears throat> Let the person choose what they want to wear. Um, uh, on the skill, the essential skill that we're going to be doing, which is number five, which is changing um, changing a resident, dressing, dressing a resident who has a weak arm. Um, one of the things that the examiner is going to look for is that you provide two outfits for the patient to choose from. Um, so um, part of that is their emphasis on making sure that patients have choices. Um, so you will need to include that when you do the skill and it's included in the steps as well. Make sure the garments and the footwear are the correct size. Um, sometimes family will buy garments and it may not be the right size. So to prevent any injury, especially with footwear, make sure that it is the correct size. Plus, everybody feels better when they're in the right size clothing. You don't want anything that's too small or anything that's too big that will uh, not look nice uh, when, when it's on the patient. You want to remove clothing from the strong side or the good side or the unaffected side first. Okay, so those are all ways that the strong side will be um, referred to as good or unaffected. Um, and also you want to put clothing on the weak side first. So you take it off the strong side first, but you put it on the weak side first. And we will go over the rules of first uh, a little bit later. Big thing is you want to support the arm and the leg when removing or putting on garment. Um, I think you probably saw that when we did the sideline position, when I was si signing uh, most of you off, I instructed you that there are two parts to the extremity. There's the arm and the forearm, and then there's the leg and the foreleg. And so both of those need to be supported when you are lifting an extremity. That is one thing that the examiners will look for. Um, you don't want to lift an arm by just taking the hand and lifting the arm like that. Support the whole arm. Very important, and we don't want anybody to get points off during the examination because of that. So changing hospital gowns. Um, so in a skilled nursing facility, like I said, most of the patients will have their own clothing. In instances where they might have an intravenous because they're getting fluids for one reason or another, or if you are on a rehab unit in the skilled nursing facility, um, anybody who has an intravenous will generally have a hospital gown to wear. Most of the time, patients in hospitals will have hospital gowns to wear because most of those patients will have IVs as well. So gowns are, um, um, some agencies for those purposes will have gowns that have either snaps or Velcros that go up the, 
the outside of the sleeve up to the shoulder and allow you to, to open up the whole sleeve so that you don't have to thread the IV, uh, um, the IV bag and tubing through that. Although there will be times that you will have to do that and we're gonna go over that in just a second. Sometimes standard gowns are used and those are the cases where you would have to thread the IV tubing and IV bag through the sleeves. <clears throat> If there is injury or paralysis, once again, remove the gown from the strong uh, arm first and support the weak arm while removing the gown, okay? Because you're going to remove the gown, uh, take off the weak side uh, first. Okay. Um, all right. So now um, just a reminder of the rules of firsts. So an easy way for you to remember it is POW, put on the weak side first and take off the strong side first. So, I mean, this, yeah, the strong side first. So both of those acronyms help you uh, decide which uh, you will do first for either putting on the clothing or taking them off. All right, so I have a few diagrams showing you procedures in terms of helping patients um, with removing uh, and putting on clothing. In this one, um, this is removing uh, a gown. The sides of the garment are brought um, from the back to the sides of the person while you are helping them up. Um, following that, uh, the other thing is uh, many times a garment with an open back is removed from the person from a sideline position. In that case, the far side of the garment, which is the, the side that will be against the bed or the dependent side, uh, is tucked under the person, and then the near side is folded up onto the patient's chest, and then you have them roll on your back, and the, the, then it will be able to be removed. Once again, the garment is removed from the strong side first. Uh, in these diagrams, the weak side is designated by the red stripes. Uh, then in the next picture, a front opening garment is removed with the person's head and shoulders raised. Um, the garment is removed from the strong side first, then it's brought around the back to the weak side. And then to, once you lay them back down, you can take the weak side off. A pullover garment is removed from the strong side first again. Then the garment is brought up to the patient's neck. So you see here in the diagram, oops, uh, let me go back to that slide. See here, she's bringing it up to the patient's neck um, and uh, so that it can be removed from the weak side um, once the patient is uh, brought on their back. Um, and then um, to remove the pants, you want to pay, have the patient lift their hips and bucks if they're, if they're able to, uh, to remove the pants. The pants are slid down over the hips and the buttocks and then they're taken off the rest uh, of the way. Um, pants are removed in the sideline position. They're removed from the strong side first, once again, and then they're slid over the hip and the buttocks. All right. And then in this diagram here, you see that the person is turned onto the strong side and the pants are removed from the weak side. In this, um, diagram, we're looking at dressing the patient. So uh, in picture A over here, um, I'm sorry, my cursor is not in the right place. So in picture A here, uh, the sideline position can be used to put on garments that open in the back. Uh, you turn the person toward you after the garment is put on the arms, um, and then the side of the garment is brought to the person's back. So, um, and then Following that in B, the uh, garment is tied in the back, similar to what we did with the partial bath. Um, uh, in this case, uh, this is a, a situation of applying a pullover garment. Uh, the garment is applied to the weak side first. You kind of um, thread it up there. Uh, a good way to do it when you're first putting the sleeve is to gather up the sleeve and then to grab the person's hand, like you're shaking hands, and slide that onto the arm. Um, we'll have a chance to practice some of these things in classroom, so it'll be um, easier to understand. And then in B, it's brought up over the head, and then uh, the strong arm can be brought in um, after it's gone over the head. All right, so that's how you put over a pullover garment. 
Now, in the case of an intravenous, you see here in A that the, the um, garment is removed from the non-IV side first, and then um, it is threaded so that it's all gathered, brought gently over the IV itself, and then the IV tubing. Then it is threaded up the IV tubing. Once you get close to the bag, you pull the bag off the IV pole and bring the bag through the sleeve. Um, then once you have a new gown, what you do is you put your arms from the outside of the gown to the inside and then bring the gown in and then thread the gown all the way down the tubing over the person's arm the, uh, that has the IV. All right. And that will end. Oh, a few things I wanted to say uh, in regards to grooming. Um, hold on just a second as I... Once again, one of the things to remember with dementia patients is that anything that involves a lot of step needs to be broken up into those steps for them because they can't understand being told to dress. Um, so you need to help them by breaking that up. Uh, persons with dementia might have difficulty with changing their clothes because one of the things they don't do well with is change. They like things very routine, very the same. So it's important that um, you try to dress them at the same time each day. Um, let them dress themselves as much as possible, like I said. Let the person choose two or three, from two or three outfits, and we talked about that a little earlier. And then one thing to remember with elderly patients, too, is to try to use garments, especially if they have deficits with um, their fine motor skills. Uh, try to avoid um, outfits that have snaps and zippers and buttons um, that make it difficult for them. Try to find things that have uh, elastic waistbands and Velcro um, that will definitely make their dressing easier and able for them to be independent. Um, so uh, that will end this uh, flipped classroom lecture. We'll, um, if you have any questions before, the, uh, before class tomorrow, please feel free to email me or to text me. Um, otherwise, bring your, your questions to class. Also bring your notes so that I can check them. And we will see you in class tomorrow. We will also do a review for the chapter 22-23 test. Um, and shortly I will be sending a study guide for that as well. So I hope you're having a good um, weekend and we will see you in class. Thanks for your attention.